concludes general questions. The next item of business is First Minister's questions. And at question number one, I call Douglas Ross. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, should a convicted rapist ever serve time in a woman's prison? First Minister. Uh, Presiding Officer, can I, uh, of course, point to the fact that uh, some matters that we will discuss in this uh, session of First Minister's questions are sub uh, However, uh, issues raised are operational matters for the Scottish Prison Service, and given understandable concerns that have been raised, it's important that I do address them. So I want to take some time, Presiding Officer, to set out the situation and answer uh, Douglas Ross's question directly, uh, very clearly. Uh, firstly, in general, any prisoner who poses a risk of sexual offending uh, is segregated from other prisoners, including during any period of risk assessment. Uh, secondly, there is no automatic right for a trans woman convicted of a crime to serve their sentence in a female prison, even if they have a gender recognition certificate. Every case is subject to rigorous individual risk assessment and as part of that, the safety of other prisoners is paramount. Uh, finally, in general terms and perhaps most importantly, I heard the Chief Executive of Rape Crisis Scotland say this yesterday, I don't see how it's possible to have a rapist within a female prison. And so let me be very clear, I agree with that statement. Bearing in mind what I've just said about the importance of individualised risk assessment as a general principle and presumption, I think that statement is correct. Uh, turning now to uh, specifics, in the case that has been in the media in recent days, uh, that risk assessment is underway. As in all cases, the Scottish Prison Service uh, won't wait until an assessment is completed if they think action is required more quickly. Now, it would not be appropriate for me, in respect of any prisoner, to give details of where they are being incarcerated. But given the understandable public and parliamentary concern in this case, I can confirm to Parliament that this prisoner will not be incarcerated at Corton Vale Women's Prison. And I hope that provides assurance to the public presiding officer, not least to the victims in this particular case. Douglas Ross. I appreciate that response from the First Minister, but this rapist is in there now. He's in segregation in a woman's prison at the moment. So I'm unsure what the First Minister is trying to say when the reality is this double rapist, this beast, is in a woman's prison right now. Uh, we think it's wrong that a rapist is sent to a woman's prison. We believe that a rapist having access to a woman's single sex space is a threat. So given what the First Minister has just said, and given he is currently in Cortonvale, does the First Minister believe that it's possible for a rapist to be held in a woman's prison as he is just now and not be a threat to women? First Minister. Um, I, I think Douglas Ross uh, should have listened perhaps more carefully to what I said. Now, I have a responsibility, presiding officer, uh, even standing in this parliament, uh, to be mindful of issues around safety and security of, of everyone. Uh, but what I said in relation to this specific case, I made some comments in general that I think should give reassurance uh, to the public. But in relation to this case, what I said, and I'm going to repeat it, the risk assessment is underway. However, as in all cases, the Scottish Prison Service uh, will not wait until an assessment is completed if they think action is required uh, more quickly. And this prisoner is not going to be incarcerated in Corton Vale uh, Women's Prison. Now, in terms of uh, the interim uh, situation um, and how uh, the situation that I've said there is going to be achieved. I've got to be mindful uh, of allowing the Scottish Prison Service uh, to do their operational job and to do that properly. But I'll go back to one of the things uh, that I said in general, and this applies to any prisoner, uh, regardless of whether they're trans or not, regardless of whether they are in a male or a female uh, prison. If any prisoner uh, poses and is considered to pose uh, a risk or gives rise uh, to any concern about sexual offending, uh, that prisoner is segregated from other prisoners, and that applies during any period of risk assessment. Um, so I think I'm being uh, very clear to Parliament in light of public concerns, but I am also allowing 
uh, having regard uh, to important issues of security and safety to allow the Scottish Prison Service to undertake their operational responsibilities in relation to an individual case. Douglas Ross. First Minister, you just have to be clear with people. Uh, can you confirm that a double rapist is currently being held in a woman's prison? Because that's the situation. Uh, and let's just hear what the former governor of Corton Vale Prison, Rona Hotchkiss, has said about this. I am absolutely clear about the fact that they should be in a male prison. You simply cannot have someone like this terrorising women. She continued, it's a red line I would not have crossed. But this double rapist only decided to change gender after he was charged by the police. It took the threat of jail for this criminal to decide to change his gender. That's not a coincidence, that is a conscious decision. Now, the First Minister is hiding behind the Scottish Prison Service, but they are a government agency accountable to SNP ministers. So all this really comes down to is what ministers decide. They had the power to prevent this happening, and they still have the power to change this in the first 72 hours under Rule 19.1a of the Scottish Prison Service rules. So can I ask the First Minister, above asking where he currently is, was there any, any ministerial involvement in the decision to send this rapist to a woman's prison? And before that 72 hours expire tomorrow, will the First Minister personally intervene and remove this double rapist from Corton Vale? First Minister. I, I think I'd repeat some of what I've already said, but let me, be, let me be clear. This prisoner is not going to be incarcerated in Corton Vale, either short term or long term. There is an Members, importance the of minister. allowing the Scottish Prison Service operationally to give effect to what I have just said. And that is important uh, to stress. Uh, these are operational matters for the Scottish Prison Service. The very fact I am standing here and addressing them, and I think most people listening to what I am saying right now will understand fully uh, what I am saying. Uh, I am not, to use Douglas Ross's phrase, hiding behind anyone. I am setting out very clearly, uh, firstly, that I agree with the comments of the Chief Executive of Rape Crisis uh, Scotland uh, yesterday when she said, and I repeat, I don't see how it's possible to have a rapist within a female prison. It is, of course, right and proper, right and proper, uh, that there are individualised risk assessments done on every prisoner, uh, and that is important, but I agree with that statement. And what I have said is that short-term or long-term, uh, this prisoner is not going to be in Corrington Vale, but it is important to allow the Scottish Prison Service operationally to give effect to the decisions that they have taken. Douglas Ross. I, I'm sorry, I've asked this three times now, so I'm going to ask for a fourth and final opportunity that I have. Where is this double rapist at the moment? Is he currently in a woman's prison here in Scotland, First Minister? Yes or no? And I'm sorry, all of this stuff about the Scottish Prison Service, this is the rules that the Scottish Prison Service have to work to. Rule 15.1 about the allocation of prisoners does allow ministers to intervene. Ministers could have intervened before now. And Rule 19.1a gives 72 hours for this to be challenged. That expires tomorrow, and we heard nothing from the First Minister about what she is going to do about that. Now, we have warned for months that violent criminals just like the sex offender, the absolute beast we are discussing today, would try to exploit loopholes in the law and attack and traumatise women. The problem, as we have said all along, is not trans people. The problem is violent offenders. But now, before the SNP's GRR bill has even come into force, rapists are currently exploiting the current laws. We shouldn't make it any easier for them to attack women. Now, Nicola Sturgeon has uh, seemed to reject that the fact that he's currently there isn't a risk to women. I, I can't agree with that. So can I ask the First Minister, will she go to Corton Vale? Will she personally explain to the women there who are sharing their prison with a double rapist why on earth her government is allowing them to be in a cell next door? First Minister. 
Again, I think if Douglas Ross uh, was actually listening and uh, was paying attention to the facts of what I'm setting out, he would know what I am saying. What I'm saying is, firstly, the Scottish Prison Service is in the process of giving effect uh, to the decision it has taken not to incarcerate uh, this prisoner in Cornton Vale. And before uh, the 72-hour period expires that Douglas Ross has referred to, uh, my expectation is that this prisoner will not be in Cornton Vale Prison. Uh, so that, I think, to most people and to people uh, who are reasonable, uh, would be a very clear explanation of the situation. Uh, there are, of course, very, very uh, small uh, number uh, of trans women who are currently in prison custody, and in fact, many of them are in male prisons. There is no automatic right uh, for any trans woman to serve their sentence in a female prison that is subject to robust risk assessment. Uh, that is right and proper. Um, and lastly, presiding officer, to be fair to Douglas Ross, he made this point, and it is an important point. Uh, we must always be careful when we're having uh, these exchanges that we do not, even inadvertently, uh, suggest that somehow trans women uh, pose an inherent threat uh, to women. Predatory men, as has always been the case, are the risk to women. However, as with any group in society, a small number of trans people will offend. Um, and where that relates to sexual offending, public concern is understandable. That's why the systems that the prison service uh, have in place already are robust. Uh, and as I think I am setting out here, uh, in this individual case, uh, those systems lead to the right outcomes. Question number